in the Iran-Israel conflict. Reports coming in seem to suggest actually at this point of time that Israel has launched revenge counter strikes on Iran. Now, this what we have ladies and gentlemen for the moment we are picking up and i'll go to our correspondent for this on more uh, we are being told that there have been three explosions near the iranian army's major air base in ifshahan uh, which has long been home to iran's fleet of american made f-14 tomcats which were purchased before the 1979 islamic revolution however there is a type of a sort of denial that is coming in uh, from Iran at this point of time, they are calling Israel's attack a failed attack and saying nowhere in the world will this qualify or be considered as an attack. Uh, let me go straight across uh, to my colleague, uh, 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 to my colleague uh, Shrinjoy, who is joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Shrinjoy, uh, what's the latest? What are you picking up? As you rightly said, the Iranians have said, "What kind of attack is this? Is this is this what you call an attack?" Now this is a retaliatory mm. barb, is what you can say. First of all, the mm. Iranians mm. struck after uh, their embassy had been hit in uh, in Syria. And the Iranian had, Iranians, with mm. due warning, had struck with 300 missiles and drones and different other things, most of which the, uh, the Israelis and the uh, allies said that they have shot down or intercepted 99% of them so that three or four would have got in. Hmm. But on the other hand, here the, Iran, the Iranians have faced a different kind of assault, a sort of surgical assault of missiles hmm. probably hitting Isfahan. Now there is, a, a as you rightly hmm. said, an air there. The F-14s were there. They were bought by the Shah from the Americans when America and Iran had a completely different relationship mm -hmm. before the Islamic Revolution. Now, mm -hmm. what kind of damage has happened is something we do not know. But it is a good thing that Israel, mm -hmm. of course, has struck despite every effort by the Americans and many others not to retaliate. It, it, Israel mm -hmm. has struck. But at least they have struck a military target mm -hmm. and the target is an air force base or somewhere close to an air force base what kind of damage that it has uh, mm. uh, done we do not know what kind of damage to these f-14s we do not know but yes there have been explosions there mm. have been explosions near the base and we'll probably know later how much damage actually was done by these mm. explosions also there is a very important point to know okay Shinjoy, we know this is the first strike or are there going to I'll... be many more uh, can I quickly inter interject you here, uh, Shrinjoy? Uh, you know, this is the fog of war. One side will say something, the other side will claim something. The real truth often emerges weeks after uh, the attack has happened. So uh, we, are, we are hearing from both sides, uh, and both sides seem to suggest that they are in a good position right now because Iran is saying, is this what you call an attack that ends up doing no damage? Uh, you're, you're actually humiliating yourself. This is, this, is, this is what they are saying to Israel. I want to ask you, uh, is this likely to escalate or does it stop here? Uh, what is your sense? I mean, we cannot predict, of course, what Israel is going to do next or what Iran is going to do next. But do you see this escalation being restricted to prove a point? Or do you see this uh, getting worse look in the coming days? Attacks. Let's look at both attacks. When Iran attacked Israel with mm. those 300 missiles and drones and all of that, it had warned the Israelis that, look, mm. we are going to do something. As a result, Israel was ready with the Iron Dome. The Americans were ready with their interceptors and all that. And as I said, 99% of those missiles and drones were intercepted. If it had been a surprise attack. Maybe the percentage would have been lower. Maybe there would have been mm. civilian casualties. Maybe there would have been more escalation. Now, mm. the Israelis, on the other hand, have struck a military target. And from what we know, they have struck one. Mm. Now, the point is, both sides will claim victory. Now, if you're going to claim victory, then hopefully uh, you will not do anything else after that. Now, that is something from people like us who want the war to end as quickly as possible. Right? No one wants to see fighting anywhere else in the world. But exactly how Netanyahu and the Islamic leadership, uh, Iranian leadership will deal with it, we don't know. As you rightly said, this is mm. something that we can only speculate mm. on. But 
both sides have claimed victory. So if you mm. claim victory, why do you need to fight anymore? That is the question. Now, if that is the uh, 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 answer, the answer is yes, you won. So why do you need to fight anymore? If that is so, then hopefully this is the so, end of it. But we'll know later in the day, we'll know in a couple of uh, well, days. Hopefully... Again, what will Iran do? What mm. will Iran do now? What will Hezbollah do now? What will Hamas do now? Mm. Hamas, you can say, is degraded. But what will the Hezbollah do, who are allies of the Iranians? Mm. Okay, Ashinja, we'll leave it there. Uh, why the location of the strike is also worrying is the fact that uh, Israel's airstrikes actually have hit a province which has Iran's nuclear sites. And that becomes part of the worry as well. Uh, we'll leave it there for the moment, Shinjoy. Thank you very much for joining us.